So what is going on people and welcome to this brand new series here on the JMO Plays channel. I hope you are doing well and well today begins the start of our FC24 career mode. It's finally come around but if you are looking forward to this series make sure that you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content and well today we're not going to be playing ultimate team although I do have my squad battles rewards to collect. But we indeed are going to be starting a new manager career. And well, I finally decided the team that I am going to be. I picked the team literally about five minutes before starting this video. So we're going to download the latest squads. And uh, yeah, we are going to jump straight into things. So we are going to create a new manager. And tell you what, I'll go and do that and we'll cut back to my manager. So here we go then, this is what my manager looks like, not too far off resembling what I'm wearing right now, although the red may cause controversy, but we are going to push on anyway, um, and you'll see why the red might cause controversy in a moment. Now, team selection, there's been calls in the comments for me to do different teams, one very popular choice has been my club Reading, I'm not going to do Reading, um, they're struggling enough in real life as it is. So I don't want to bring more hurt on them. I might do Reading one day as my own team. Um, but yeah, for this career mode, we are not going to. Of course, we've got some other teams in there. The likes of Peterborough, of course, that we did last year. I don't think we'll be able to replicate that same success. And uh, it's going to be hard to replace Joseph Garner, is it not? Another call, definitely won't be touching Oxford. Another call has been to go back to these boys Barnsley and see if we can't finish the job and well I won't be doing Barnsley because we did two years with them we might again return to Barnsley one day also looking at that home kit that's not great so I don't really want to be playing in that every week no instead because of how late we're starting in this cycle we're going to be starting in the championship now Plenty of teams in the Championship, good teams. Birmingham, of course, had their troubles under Rooney this season. Some good transfer budgets at this level as well. Blackbird have got 17 million. Crikey. Still sponsored by Venkies as well, you love to see. But yeah, some pretty healthy transfer budgets in and around this level. Huddersfield was one team that I did sort of... I think it was this to the team I'm going to be, or Huddersfield was the team that I was going to choose. We seem to have a thing for Yorkshire Hull, Ipswich are there, Leeds with a monumental transfer budget. Leicester's even bigger. We're not going to be Leeds or Leicester. I feel like that would be too easy. We are going to sell ourselves a bit of a challenge. Plymouth was under contention as well. Another team that I considered as well was Sunderland, but they've been doing surprisingly well this season. But no, well, I say surprisingly well this season. They're up there, there or thereabouts. They did even better last season. Superb last season, but no... This year, on this career mode, we're not going to be Southampton. We are going to be Sheffield Wednesday. The Owls struggling, of course, in real life, fighting relegation. And, uh, yeah, I think I can bring a little bit of success, hopefully, to Wednesday. Get them back to the promised land of the Premier League. And, uh, yeah, that's why Red might be controversial, because of the noisy neighbours. But Sheffield Wednesday is going to be. And now I need to sort the stadium out. So the stadium sorted. I do feel like not having Hillsborough in the game is not necessarily an oversight. But for me it's always one of the you know bigger and best stadiums in the country for me. But um, even still. Right. This year we are going to play on Legendary to start with. Because in the testers that I've done and from what I've seen other people say. Uh, this year is quite hard uh, in terms of match difficulty. I've experienced that somewhat on, on Ultimate Team. I haven't really played a career mode this year. Um, so we won't start on Ultimate. We will start on Legendary. Four, four minute halves as normal. We will be doing Sterling. European competition is enabled and the groups look correct. So we'll carry on there. Transfer window enabled. Job offers internationally disabled. Strictness strict and its financial takeover is disabled. So there we go then. Everything's set up for this new career mode. As I said earlier, if you are looking forward to this, pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel. It'd be great if we could get over that 
500 sub uh, milestone this year. That'd be great. We've got plenty of time to do it. It is only mid February, but let's uh, let's save up. No, nope. uh, how do I? There we go. I'm forgetting buttons left, right, and center. Right, Chef Wed. Very good. And here we go. Bet that's going to look good, isn't it? Walking into a sea of blue with a red jumper. We can change the colour of the jumper if uh, if needs must. Set your tactical vision. I will. Oh. I forgot about this this year. Ah, oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Let me go and uh, let me go and do this bit as well. I forgot about this stuff. Right. That is all finally done. There you can see. Unveil unveiled? Unveiled as the new Sheffield Wednesday manager. But yeah, I've hired my coaches. Um, there's Nkunku being unveiled at Chelsea. Let's see what's in the inbox then. Important in yet, very good. Youth Academy. Have we got any Joseph Garners? We've got Michelle Poli, who is only 15, but is already 62 rated. When he's 16, we will probably call him up. And... Get him out on loan. I've just noticed the shirt sponsor is a flat gap with A up. Nothing says Yorkshire more than that to me. I love that. And then these two guys, Ad Aiden, Adan, maybe, because he's Ecuadorian, South American. Up to 82 potential, but 44 rated. Might be... Oh, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Oh, Loberhang Smith as well. Again, up to 94 potential. But... At uh, 46 rated. Might just be too far out of reach. But we'll see. So that's what we've got in the academy. Vision expectations. We'll go through all of that in just a second. Um, oh, the menus have changed. Okay, so team strategy. That's what the coaching setup is like at the moment. Um, no, that's what we should have. These are my coaches, basically. We've got one attacking coach who's a five-star. I think we've got two midfield coaches, three defence coaches, and the five-star, 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 five-star coach had to be my goalkeeping coach because there were no other good goalkeeping coaches. I've just gone with the standard vision for now. We could change that. Uh, maybe as I get used to it, training plan, I'm just going to leave on balance because, again, I don't really know what I'm doing. Objectives. This is the main one. Okay, so... Youth development. Within two seasons, have at least one player from the Youth Academy signed the first team play at least 30% of the games in the next season. We're going to have to have a bit of a worldie come through if that's the case and don't normally meet those ones. But it is a low priority, so it's not the end of the world. Brand exposure is the highest priority we have. Get five games without defeating away games this season. Well, at least that's not in a row, so... We go undefeated in five away games. We've achieved that. I feel like that is doable. Fingers crossed. Financial. Finish the season with a profit margin of 25.5 million. I don't really know how the finances probably work on FIFA this year. So we'll just have to see if we complete it. We might just do that with prize money. Who knows. Domestic success. They just want us to avoid relegation. Absolutely fine with me in this first season. And comparative to real life. And the FA Cup reached a round of 16. Yeah, is what it is. And long term, within two seasons, become a mid-table side. Definitely achievable. And obviously, we have no continental uh, objectives. So, they're playing... Or they have a default 4-2-3-1. We will see um, what they play. I tend to like to stick to how the team plays normally. Of course, like Barnsley, the first year, certainly be stuck to a, a five at the back. Um, so, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how... How will Sheffield Wednesday operate in real life? Let's have a quick look at the squad hub. See what we're dealing with then. In terms of our best player. Big Bowser Bannon. I wouldn't have expected any less. Little midfield maestro. He's 33 now. You kind of forget how old he is. He's been knocking around for a long time. But he's still got real quality. Um, but he is. I would imagine if we look at his development plan. He is going to start declining very quickly so he's in the last year of his deal the likeliness is this will be barry's last year with chef wednesday and then we will probably let him go when his deal expires um other good players in there of course windass who is coveted by south american teams i'm fairly sure in the window just gone but can play cam striker or on the wing 
EKA boat I am familiar with because of FM this year. Had him for Reading in my uh, FM save. And uh, he was all right for me. Um, so, yeah, interested to see what we can get out of him. Deshaun Bernard, good young centre-back in the last year of his deal as well. A few loans in as well. Pervader from Leeds. Pedersen from Birmingham or Swansea. Swansea, it literally says it right there. Um, and Hendrick as well. Okay, so let's have a look at so Dawson. Beadle in from Brighton, who was just on loan at Oxford. I do know that much. Charles is a youngster. James Johnson. Marvin Johnson. God, he's only 30. Feels like he's been around forever. Iyakwi, Aorfa, Fumero, Bamadiabi, Delgado. Never heard of you. Interesting. Just a random Chilean right back. Chilean. Chilean. Uh, uh, been watching New Zealand too much. Chilean right back. <laughs> Fair enough. Valentin. I feel like I've heard of you. Sakira, young Brazilian. Will Volks. Big fan of Will Volks. Byers, Bakinson out on low. Malik Wilkes, Masaba, Kasama, Smith, the big lump. Patterson, Ashley Fletcher, Lee Gregory, and Bailey Calamatari. Okay. Well, I think I need to get one of my spreadsheets going, work out what uh, what tra no, what tactic we're going to play with this team, sorry, and then work out who is going to be involved in the squad. Transfer-wise, obviously, we need to see where the gaps are in the squad, but uh, interesting to see what the scouts are throwing up early doors. Now to see if there's any freebies about. You know I love a freebie. What's our... we got 5 million... I swear we said we had like 7... Oh, yeah, seven, total 7. We spent 2. Okay, cool. Right. Let me go draft up my spreadsheet, and then I'll come back to you and tell you my plans. Right. After much deliberation, the spreadsheet is complete. The squad has its plan. This is how we're going to roll this season. We are going to go over the 4-2-3-1, which was actually the default... Um, Default tactic for Shovel Wednesday. I've just pushed the wingers up, so they're now wingers rather than midfielders. And I've uh, pushed one of the central midfielders slightly further forward. So we've got a CM and a CDM. Um, so this is how it's going to go. Dawson is going to be our number one with Beadle as backup. Beadle's growth throughout the season may see him take the shirt from Dawson, but Dawson still, according to his development plan, can grow. I've uh, gone and assigned development plans to all these guys as well. Pierce Giles, we're going to look to get out on loan at 17 and 56 rated. There's hope. There is hope. And um, so, yeah, we'll see what Pierce can do if he can get a loan. Reese James is going to be our backup left back for this season. Marvin Johnson at 32 and uh, is probably our third best left back, maybe even fourth best left back at this point. Does find himself on the transfer list. We're going to try and cash in in the last year of his contract. Pedersen is going to be our starting left back for this season. Ihikwi is going to be one half of our starting centre back partnership. Oyolfa is going to be a backup. For Maywo, we're going to try and get out on loan at 24 years of age. Um, still a decent age and has got potential. Um, so at 66 rated, could be in and around the squad, but I just thought there were slightly better options, maybe more experienced options. So. Uh, yeah, we're going to try and get him out on loan because we don't want to waste his potential and he could grow nicely somewhere else and then come back next year and be a part of this first team. So, yeah, for Mayo, we won't let go. We will try and loan out. Bama Diaby is going to be a backup centre-back for us. Dijon Bernard is going to partner here. Hickwe in the starting centre-back role. Liam Palmer is going to start as our backup right-back to Delgado only because... I have no idea who this Delgado fella is. The Palmer's been around for ages and been at Sheffield Wednesday for a long time. I want to see what Delgado's about. So he's going to have the starting spot for now, but it could well rotate between the two this season. But purely out of curiosity, I'm going for Delgado. Valentin is on the transfer list. The one thing I noticed about Valentin is on FIFA, he is absolutely rapid. But he's just lacking quite a bit behind the other two the other two are getting on so we could loan out valentin but he is the wrong side of 25 so don't know sort of yeah i talked myself into transfer listing him rather than loaning him so um but if he has moved just moved to Sheffield wednesday he might not get a transfer might grow and then 
who knows? So for now, Valentin is on the transfer list, but we will see if we can get money for it. How much is he worth? 600k. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Zakira, I have transfer listed as well. I know Charles is only one rating higher, but he is a year younger. So I feel like Zakira just uh, he has got potential to grow. If he's got if he doesn't get a transfer this summer and he grows between now and then, we could maybe look to loan him out in January, but I don't just, I just think it's too low at 18 to see significant growth. So I have transfer listed in for now, but again, we could we could see. Will Volks is going to be a backup centre midfielder for us in that CDM role to this man, Mohamed Diaby. He is going to purely be the anchor in front of the defence, mainly because he can't move. His pace stats are shocking. Um, so, yeah. How... Is he an absolute... He's six foot six. I didn't realise he was that much of a bean pole, okay? That might explain why he can't move. Yeah, you see there, pace of 40. Physical of 80, but... Yeah, he's going to literally sit in front of the defence. And just, yeah. We've got a central midfield partnership that can barely move. Excellent. Barry Bannon is going to start in that... See, his pace isn't bad for a 33-year-old. He's going to start in the centre of midfield for us and he is going to be the man that makes us tick. Um, but yeah, as we said, he will unfortunately start to decline fairly quickly. Hendrick is going to be a backup central midfielder for us. Nothing special, but just an option. Um, Wilkes we're going to use as a winger. I think we'll... You know, I kind of, I like to interchange my winger. So although it says he's a right midfielder or a striker... We're going to use him on the left wing. I am training his position to change to a left wing. Um, and that's only going to take a couple of weeks. He is left footed, so I prefer him to be on the right. But Callum Patterson, he's, uh, I've never rated Callum Patterson. So, but he is going to be a part of this squad. And he can't. his training is going to take years to convert to position. So although Wilkes is left footed, he is going to be a left winger for us. But... The wingers will interchange, so he's just going to be a winger, probably primarily to start with as a backup, but that may change depending on how preseason and the early weeks go. Perveda is going to start on the right-hand side for us. That's my plan at the moment. Again, he's left-footed, so can cut in um, on that left foot. That's the plan. Masaba is going to be my starting left winger for now. Again, Interchangeable it says he can't play left wing, but we are training him there again. Again, only going to take a couple of weeks. Right footed, so that's why we're going to play him on the left, so he can cut in. But very young, very good potential. Um, so we're going to see how that works. But him and Wilkes, I think, will be fighting out on that left hand side. I think Pervader's probably got the right hand side cover for now. Um, Gusama, we're going to try and get out on loan again, probably. Just about, I maybe could have tried to shift on Callum Patterson, but I know he's um, he's been at Sheffield Wednesday for a while, so he's probably someone we should try and include. Um, but Kasama, good potential, can play on the left wing or as a striker. We've got an abundance of strikers, and we've probably got enough people that can cover the wings as well. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get him out on loan because, yeah, good potential. Uh, Michael Smith is going to be our backup striker, just another option, big lump to come on. Um, yeah, so he's just there going to do a job. Patterson, as I say, we're going to use him as one of our wingers. Can use him up front if we need to. I can't believe he's only 28, but he's here. Windass is going to be our number 10 to start with because he's one of the only few players that can play in that number 10 role, but we've got... Bannon in central midfield a bit deeper and Perveda out of the right. So Windass, um, that's just where he slots in. And I'm actually quite happy for him to sit there and help sort of try and orchestrate the play. Um, Lee Gregory, 34 years of age, 65 rated. We are going to try and cash in on him because he is going to start declining very soon, similarly to Bannon. So, yeah, we're going to try and cash in and get some money for Gregory if we can. I know he's... Uh, He's been a prolific, well, I say prolific goal scorer. I always think of Lee Gregory as one of those sort of championship level strikers that will bag you goals no matter what. In his older age, that might not be the case, but 
Um, yeah, I've always liked Lee Gregory as a striker. Ugbo is going to be our starting striker for now. Um, just to, I'm interested to see what we can get out of him. Of course, like I said earlier, I've got some experience with this guy already this year, albeit on a different game. So a little bit of bias, but we'll see how he gets on. He's not the quickest and he hasn't got the best finishing. So we'll have to see what we get out of Ugbo. We might resort to lumping them up to Smith, but we'll see. Maybe we can do a 4-4-2. There was quite a few, when I was researching uh, formations with Sheffield United, uh, Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, good lord, don't make that mistake too many times. We've used quite a lot of formations in the last few games, but 4 2 3 one seemed to be the most common, so that's why I went with that. And lastly, Bailey Calamari, we are going to get out on loan. Um, just, yeah, he's got, you know, decent potential, good enough level at 18 to hopefully try and grow. Uh... A local lad, I understand. May I may well be wrong, um, but if I, I'm assuming as Danny Calamari's son from way back in the day, um, and also Ashley Fletcher, I've terminated his loan because I didn't see a place in the squad for him. Um, it was only year on a year's loan was our third best striker, but we've got Gregory. Um, if we don't sell him, Kasama. If we don't load him, Calamari. If we don't load him. Wilkes can play up front, Patterson can play up front, Mashaba can play up front, Windass can play up front. So I just didn't see a need for Ashley Fletcher in the squad. So he has his oh, he hasn't been terminated. His loan has been terminated. So according to my spreadsheet, we have four players on the transfer list. That is Marvin Johnson, Lee Gregory, Paul Valentin, and Guy Sakira. And on the loan list we have four players. Akin Fabewo, Jedi uh, I think I said that right. Jedi, JD, yeah, JD. Kasama, Bailey Calamari, Pierce Charles. We have a gap in the squad. We need another number 10 to come in. So that is what I am going to look for to start with. Um, just looking at financial. What's our top earner on? Barry Bannon on 12 and a half grand. Who's our most valued player? Deshaun Bernard, two and a half million. Well, he, uh, he might need a new contract sooner rather than later. But we will see... Um, yeah, oh, Windass's contract is expiring as well. A lot of players expiring, I've noticed in this squad. But anyway, so this is what our team looks like. As you can see, just talk to you through, but there is a visualisation. I know Bannon and DRB look fairly similar, but Bannon is set to CM, DRB to CDM. And if you notice with the standard, the wingers are just pushed up that little bit more. Um, so, I will begin scouting. We will arrange our pre-season friendlies. I will cut back to you if there's transfer news to talk about when we have our friendlies. Otherwise, I will see you for the first game of the season away at West Brom. That could be a challenge, but one I hope that we are both up for. So, I will see you as and when. So, our first departure then, and I believe this is Marvin Johnson who is on his way out. We had two offers for Marvin Johnson. I hope it's Marvin Johnson. <laughs> um, yeah, two offers from Cardiff and Coventry, both of uh, about 540, and it is 540k to Coventry for Marvin Johnson. It was only going to be one because he just turned down Cardiff, actually, but an A rated deal. Um, but that's the first permanent outing that we've had. If we just have a quick look at other offers, so we've had another offer for Lee Gregory from. AGF Aarhus. We've already accepted a bid from Casa Pia in Portugal for Lee Gregory. So we will accept this one as it meets his value. Loan offer from uh, Pier loan offer from Stockport for Pierce Charles. It's one of those loan to buys, but we've just negotiated a one year loan deal. So hopefully they'll come back to that. We also had an offer for Michael Hickwe, eight hundred and sixty thousand, which is above market value for him. But if I was to let go of him, I'd probably want over a million, to be honest, as he is one of our starting centre-backs. And they wouldn't go even close to over a million, so we said no. So that's keeping you up to date as it stands. If we have a quick look, you can see there the pre-season group has been drawn. And we have Racing de Ferrol from Spain. Heracles from, I think that's the Dutch one, I want to say. And then Cartagena as well from Spain. And then we will move into league action. 
another departure for us and I believe I want to say Lee Gregory could be wrong I don't think it's Kadamatri or Charles so I'm thinking this is Lee Gregory he hasn't turned down either move so it's a mystery to me as to who this is going to be and Gregory has gone to Casapia to uh, retire in Portugal that would be quite nice for him but yeah some more money in the coffers in terms of other offers we have just had we've got another offer from for Mayo, this time from Trabzon uh, Sport we're negotiating a loan with Espanyol we've also had a bid from Huesca for uh, Bailey Calamatri as well so I will go in and negotiate this one see what Travis from Sport say right the first game day of this career mode then and we have to do match preparation I'm not doing a training session but for Roll Gazanik that's not the Gazanik is it surely may well be uh, can't say I recognize any other of their players potentially but they play a counter-attacking system, I do believe. No, it's not the Gazaniga, even though I didn't mean to go onto the screen. But there you go. So, playing a counter-attacking system against our team. And, I yeah, let's just quick sim this one. See how we get on. 3-0 win, lovely stuff. Ugbo, DRB and Perveda. Well, we only had three shots and we scored all three, which is quite impressive. But a fairly even game, so for all will be disappointed that uh, the scoreline is so unfavourable towards them, it must be said. More offers and some scout reports coming back in, which is good. And Wilkes' position change is going to go through as well. Lovely stuff. Ooh, the position change puts him up to 68. That's nice. Okay, let's... I'm going to give him the support winger. Uh, support winger focus for now. Because he's already got good pace. But this helps him in some of his weaker areas. Very nice. So a permanent offer for Michael Smith from Aruca in Portugal. But again, valued at just under 900k. If we were to part with him again, I'd want over a million. They're not willing to go over that. So I'm just going to reject that. But a loan to buy offer from Hull for Gusama. I will delegate this as a normal loan, but if he can go there and get first team football at this level, he could grow quite nicely. Well, well, well. A bid for Barry Bannon from Leicester. Valued at 1.2, they're offering 1.25. And they reckon we can get 1.35. No way, Jose. You want my captain, my best player. You're the best team in the league with a budget of over 50 million. Two and a half million at least to get him off my hands. No thank you, Leicester. Right, time for match day number two against Heracles. They play 5-4-1 flat, interestingly. Again, I can't say I recognise any of their players. Is that Jetro Williams on the bench? That might well be. Love to see it. And they play a kick and rush. Okay, so the... Okay. Just long ball then essentially long ball chase it down fair enough right let's go to the kickoff then and we have a few tired players so actually they're going to need to make some changes right the necessary changes made Mil uh, Wilkes, Volks and Smith in we push Bannon up to the number 10 while Volks is just filling in and hopefully another good performance 3-1 for Heracles, Patterson coming on, grabbing a consolation, but uh, fair play to Heracles, they deserve that. Well, 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 brought back Downsworth with a bump, you have to say, not ideal, but still one more friendly to go against Cartagena, and then on to league action. Oh, and just to bring you up to date, Calamari has gone on loan to Huesca. And Fameiro has gone on loan to Espanyol. And we have an offer for Will Volks from Norwich as well, but again, not good enough, so he stays. So this time an offer from Watford for Cameron Dawson. And again, people offering such terrible wages. I guess because these players are in the last years of their deals, 
they don't even get much from. But I'm not going to let them go for like market value when these guys are starting in my team. It's just ridiculous. Again, you'd want over a million for Dawson. So it's a no from me. We haven't had another offer for Gasama from Ghent. Okay, well, Hull, oh, Hull rejected the loan, uh, loan offer for Gasama. I didn't even notice that. Oh, no. Are we still in negotiation? I don't know. Right, we'll delegate anyway with Ghent. If he can go into Ghent and get game time, that'll be decent. Um, that's a familiar face. Right, final friendly then against Cartagena, and they are playing 4 1 4 1. I recognise a couple of names in that squad. It must be said. A few Mal I think there's a few Malika. Maybe past, well, present, and future. Well, but not future at all. Maybe, but certainly not present because they play for Cartagena. Uh, counter attacking system for Cartagena. Cool. And how are we looking fitness wise? Certainly a couple of changes that need to be made. So we're going to do that. Right, a number of changes made then. But we will quick sim this final friendly and it's a 2 1 win for Cartagena. Fairly even game. Windass grabbing the goal for us, but a goal 14 minutes from time give Cartagena the win. So, not the best pre season for us. A win and two defeats is certainly not ideal. And, well, the scouts reckon they found all they can find for the number 10 role. Still waiting on some more scout reports before we make a final decision. So we have some scout reports back then. We have three scout, three scouts, two scouts, two scouts, two scouts. England and Spain we are looking at, and we have a number of options. Some younger, some older, but all around a similar sort of level. Uh, but we, yeah, we'll go through them here. Unai Gomez, twenty-year-old from Bilbao, decent rating to start with. It must be said, um, not bad, but only twenty, so can grow. Mario Soriano has got some excellent physicals, it must be said, from Ibar. Good finishing as well for a, a cam, it must be said. Um, but again, young with plenty of potential, potentially. Pablo Gonzalez, Gonzalez actually. I just assumed that was Gonzalez, didn't even read that properly. Pablo Gonzalez, good name. A little bit older at 22, but still very young indeed. Not maybe as well-rounded as some of the other guys, it must be said. Jose Pozzo, again, has got some very good physicals. He's a bit older at 27, so technicals, as you might imagine, a bit more established. A good option at Viacano. Ali Asar, the man we had at Peterborough last year, again, appearing in this database. We know how good Ali Asar can be. His versatility important as well. Peke, I think. Pe yeah, I'm going to go with Peke. Uh, uh, I think that's Racing Santander, I want to say. But again, decent versatility, um, only 20 years old again, decent physicals, not the greatest uh, technicals, must be said, is good at pens though. So he could certainly be an option. Fran Villalba is a player that I have come across a few times. I think he's a, I want to say former Malaga player. Um, I'm pretty sure he played for them when I watched them, could be wrong. Um, but yeah, at Sporting Chicken Goujon, of course, again, good versatility. Some decent technicals there and some uh, pretty nice physicals there as well. 25, so a good age. Still got time to grow. Oliver Cooper, man at Swansea. I do like Oliver Cooper in real life. I do think he's a good player. Tw I didn't realise he was 23. I thought he was younger. But has got a bit of versatility about him. Some nice physicals. Has got a bit of something about him. A bit of pace. Technicals. Not as good as others, but still not bad. And again, young enough to uh, to certainly improve. Adama Traore, not the Adama Traore, one at Hull. Some very good physicals, pretty well-rounded, it must be said. Can play in the middle or out wide. Some really good technicals, actually. Very well-rounded, sort of technically, it must be said. Is 28, though, so probably wouldn't improve that much, it must be said. But probably one of the better players we have looked at. Yeho Yamaliak. At Brentford. I hope I got that right. 66 rated, so he's a little bit lower rated than some of these other players. But he's only 19. Physically, is okay. Not brilliant. Technically, again, is okay. Not brilliant. But at 19, can grow. But the option I'm going to go for is George Hall. 19-year-old at Birmingham. 67 rated. I've never heard of this guy. I must be honest. 
but some very good physicals is pretty quick it must be said and f technically not the greatest it must be said but at 19 years of age can improve the fact he's english that he's homegrown has some potential is really what's um and he's got a bit about him in terms of physicality is what is drawing me in it must be said so george hall is who i'm going to go for is valued at 2.1 reckon we could get him for about 1.7 he's only on three grand a week as well so we will go in for george hall good timing this as well because it is actually the day of the west brom game so if he can come in george hall as we think being a birmingham boy well, i don't know if he's local but playing for birmingham you'd think he'd want to help us get one over on west brom and we've gone in at 1.7 and they are happy with that of course i don't think an update in time to put tony mowbray in the game but uh nevertheless we will negotiate with george and see what he fancies okay so he's coming to be probably a backup to start with so we'll offer him rotation he wants important can't really do much else so in that case we'll have to accept for now uh, in terms of contract length you're only 19 we'll offer you four years george he's happy with that excellent doesn't want to really scores either and he wants three grand a week with a signing bonus and the goals well we'll uh we'll remove the bonus and submit that and see what he says he's happy with that excellent so george hall our first signing in this career mode 19 years of age there's my assistant welcoming him in to the club i stick out like such a sore thumb in red that's gonna have to change isn't it i'm just surrounded by blue and i'm just there in a red hoodie that was a little bit ill-informed of me i do apologize but putting george through his paces for his medical i don't know whether he'll be the number eight well no he definitely won't be the number eight he's only 19 I have a thing about age and squad numbers. Maybe I'll explain that another day. But for 1.7 million, George Hall has joined Sheffield Wednesday. Welcome, George. We certainly look forward to having you. Right, these guys can disappear now. I'll go and sort out the squad, get George involved somewhere, give him a shirt number, and indeed a, uh, a development plan of all sorts. And then we will go from there. So we've given George a development plan. He will be number 27 for us. Ashley Fletcher's former number. We'll get him involved in the team. I've changed my manager. I didn't realise you could get club like wear now as well in this. So that's uh, that's actually pretty decent. Can you get bottoms? No, you can get tracksuit pants but still blue hoodie for Sheffield Wednesday I've learned my lesson I'm not gonna get red anymore we have uh, put out a new instruction I'm gonna look for some more wingers and see what is about um, see if we can't maybe improve in that area but uh, yeah we'll put the feelers out but for now it is indeed game day against West Bromwich Albion so the pre-match report then they are expected to play a 4-2-3-1 as well. Yasim, I say, I can't say I recognise. Swifter on the bench, of course. What a legend. Oh, Alex Mowat as well. What a guy. Legend of the channel. Wing play approach. Okay, so certainly Phillips and Wallace going to be key players for them. That is a faux show. We'll do a, uh, we'll do a press conference. Why not? First one of the season see if we can't improve the morale what's the mood ahead of your first competitive game we're going to try and improve every day of course the expectation is for us to struggle this year and hopefully we won't do that can your boys beat the drop this season i'd say the players are good enough yet the expectation is we should fairly comfortably survive i think the prediction was like 18th or something um will you stick with barry bannon barry bannon is a big player for us and Sheffield Wednesday is our captain, is our best player on paper. I wouldn't want anyone else leading this team. So, if we go to kickoff, then that is the team that we're going to go with. Going to go with Wilkes. 
over Masaba for this one. Um, otherwise, <clears throat> it's as you were. Hall is on the bench. Let's play our first game of this save. After weeks of anticipation, we get to find out for real what is going to happen. A special occasion. It is the first match of a brand new campaign. I'm going to have to restart this game because of the kick clash, for goodness sake. Right, we're here. We're back. I've had to put West Brom in their away kit because our kits are blue and white stripes and white. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, West Brom playing in their away kit at home, but we are in our away kit as well. But first feel of the ball in this season. Be interesting to see how this team indeed gets on this season. Just playing it around the defence nicely. We let Ia Hickwe bring the ball forward. Bannon hasn't got too much around him. Pedersen can get down the line here. Can try and cut this one in. That was supposed to be for Bannon. But Wilkes actually offside. So not the greatest start. But there we go. I am a little bit nervous about how this is going to go on Legendary after some experiences I've had this season already but Pervada there's a bit of a gap here actually and it's Josh Windass who's bursting in the area Josh Windass has rifled one into the top corner and on the 10 minute mark Sheffield Wednesday lead away from home and that was all rather too easy wasn't it the gap was there the initial pass from Pervada was actually supposed to be into Windass but uh it found Ogbo, who had some space and the awareness to find Windass in behind. And Josh Windass, the first scorer in this series. And, well, I don't think many would have expected this start from us. But we find ourselves 1-0 up and looking good away at the Hawthorns on opening day. West Brom moving the ball about really nicely, really quickly. And Natsu Wallace has got by Pedersen here. Drives towards the byline, Jed Wallace cuts back. A long ball back to Alex Mallet. And we can rob the ball off of him, you know. And can we set away a boat? He's not the quickest. Can he get away from Kipri? He can, but the defence has recovered by now. They'll find Malik Wilkes on the overlap. We'll need to cut back there. There's options in the middle. He tries to find Barry Bannon. But the pass, not the greatest, it must be said. And now West Brom can bring this one away. Wallace again trying to set off, but Pedersen... This time able to keep up and use his strength. Oh, and Bannon, well, almost gives the ball away there. But thankfully, the touch. Oh, no, and again, we're getting very lucky with these passes. Diaby, Bannon has made a run forward. Agbo holds up the ball well. We'll get this out to Pervada. We'll try and cut inside, and it's completely unopposed hit. Oh, it finds Agbo. Oh. And Diaby, there's a long ball here out to Pedersen. Try and get down the line if we can. Fake cross. Didn't mean to do it, but it's actually worked quite nicely. Windass. Oh, again, these passes. Just not finding their mark at the moment. But we are getting away with it. Win Bando, sorry. Here is Josh Windass. Out to Malik Wilkes. Try and stand this one up if we can. But it's blocked. And behind for the corner. Pressure keeps coming from Sheffield Wednesday. Windass with the ball in. Oh, that is a fantastic header away. Really put his body on the line there. The defender put Paveda collects. And again, we give the ball away. I guess playing ultimate team, kind of used to uh, playing with better players, it must be said, than the Sheffield Wednesday side. So going to need to temper my expectations. That's a really important block from here, Hickwe. And Pedersen can play this down the line to Wilkes. But uh, Furlong, well, gets the challenge in, but does concede the throw. And Pedersen has made a good run. And he'll cut inside Christian Pedersen and keep going. Christian Pedersen with his right foot has tucked it into the bottom corner. And the left back on an amazing run has put us 2-0 to the good. I did not expect that, but he just kept going and going. And as soon as he reached Kipri, he didn't even put in a challenge. And you can hear the boos ringing around the Hawthorns now. But on his weaker foot, a superb finish from the left back. 
And we're 2 0 up. What? Well, I was about to say Watford then. West Brom, stunned. They just have not been able to cope with our attacking play, it seems, at this moment in time. Which uh, is quite surprising, but. We will certainly take it. And a good challenge in there from Bernard. But a poor pass. The first we've seen of Delgado. And he's in behind. Is Matt Phillips. Delgado back. Trying to anticipate the cutback. And Phillips tries to beat Dawson at his near post. But into the side netting. Oh, and Delgado gives the ball away again. Hit. But does manage to recover. And Bernard. Lovely composure. And there we go. That is half time. 2-0 to the good. I certainly didn't expect that, to be honest. I expected a, certainly a tougher test than we've had so far. But, uh, yeah, looking good on opening day. Hopefully, we can hold on to this lead. 2-0, they say. One of the most dangerous scores, if not the most dangerous score in football. But, uh, so far, West Brom have shown very little. And, again, the centre-backs having an absolute... Superb game at this moment in time. Good turn from Ogbo. Bannon's made the run, but we will find... Oh, it's a good overlap by Delgado. The ball was there to Bannon. We're going to find Perveda. And Windass onto his right. And not the greatest strike. Fairly well wide. West Brom making an early change in this second half. I think that was Josh Meyer coming on for them. It was indeed. Attempt at a cross field, but Delgado will cover that one very nicely. And then just played into some trouble there. It was actually Windass. I'm getting those two confused quite a bit. And now Mauer in behind. Good play. Bannon trying to get back to do his defensive duties. And well, Josh Meyer, after not coming on too long ago as a sub, has put West Brom back in this game. And we said 2-0 was a dangerous scoreline. And well, the first time they've really got into our area. Some good twisting and turning. Finds Josh Meyer in a lot of space. Bernard couldn't quite get over in time to block the shot and the power. Just beats Cameron Dawson. Not really a lot he can do in that instance. As Paveda needs to get himself a bit of space. Windass out to Pedersen. He can burst forward again now. That touch certainly not good. And he's out of position now. And West Brom are going to look to counter down this right hand side. Wallace does well. Gets the ball to Furlong. Wilkes does well to get back in cover though. And it will be Alex Mauer coming off. And I believe that is Swifter coming on. It is indeed number 19 for West Brom. And into Meyer. Delby goes for the tackle. That's a lovely play. Swift on his left foot. And the two substitutes for West Brom have come on and made a massive difference. And from two goals down. They find themselves level. A lovely finish from Swift. Just inside the area. On his left foot. Right in the corner. Out. Dawson outstretched. But cannot stop that going in. And now the t crowd have their tails up. Willing their team on to maybe kind of do the unthinkable. Oh, that is poor. And now we could be in for a world of pain in this final 20 minutes. DRB. Windass he needs some runs but it's not really coming from Perveda it might now though in behind Yossalu there's a man in the middle there oh we tried to find him oh, well it's a good composed header down in the end I think it was Bannon that made the run forward and Barry Bannon probably not the man you want to try and find with a cross but it's a good header up and now Windass could be in behind Josh Windass oh it's an unbelievable save I thought for all the world that through one on one, he would apply the finish, but apparently not. We're going to make just the one sub for now. Pedersen is pretty tired, so we're going to bring on Liam Palmer to play on that side. I know he's not a natural left back, but hopefully he could do a job as Agbo gets on the end of that corner, but his header well over the bar. And they've worked this well, West Brom, and they're down this right hand side again. It's Matt Phillips who switched. Wings here, Furlong into the area. Bannon tries to get back to help out. Back to Phillips. And Wilkes manages to anticipate the movement and gets the breakaway and can keep on going here. Malik Wilkes plays in Josh Windass. Oh, that was supposed to be Diaby. 
Ugbo has got a bit of space. Ike Ugbo. Oh, what a finish from Ike Ugbo. With five minutes to go at the Hawthorns. The sub not the substitute, the new striker has made an impact. Getting past the centre back, rifling it into the side netting. It's his first real opportunity, clear cut at least. Griffith's beaten this time. What a finish. You see the manager there, not happy with rest one, but we turn around, we give it the little fist pumps. Ugbo, can't believe it. He thinks he's won it. We think we might have won it. I am going to make some late subs. Poor. A whole host of changes for us. I think I've made four changes. But, uh, yeah, a number of players coming off. So we brought on Smith. Oh, I can't even remember. Smith, Hall, DRB, and Volks, I think. We've shifted a few players around, but now we just need to hold out as Bernard has done superbly well there. And now George Hall with his first taste. And there's actually a ball through here for Smith. And Michael Smith is in behind here. Michael Smith... Let's finish this game off. We will win at the Hawthorns. Inspired substitutions. Hall to Smith. And well, we just put him on as the. <laughs> I'm over there. They still haven't finished it because he's celebrating in the far corner. So apparently I've run across the whole pitch. That little kid, he is absolutely loving it. But Hall, it's a really good pass to Smith just playing on the final shoulder. But the play, they're just absolutely knackered. The West Brom defenders cannot even keep up. With Michael Smith. Well, Kipper wasn't far off, but a really good hold up play from Michael Smith. And uh, we've uh, found ourselves taking all three points. And it might be even better here if Hall has done really well since coming on, it must be said. Oh, Volks. Oh, I could have played in Pervader. But uh, that will be the game. And well, we've suffered. Or I say we've suffered. We've ended up. I'm trying to think of the words. We almost suffered a nightmare. Oh, that's a good header. Can we get on that one? We can't. <laughs> that header has hit the bar from almost the edge of the area. But that is it. That is game. My word. What a game that was. From 2 0 up to 2 all. And then in the final few minutes, just going on and scoring a couple of goals to secure the game. Breathless. But what a start. And we will do the post match interview. Oh, my word. Delighted with the first win. This team can grow, absolutely. With a showing like that on the first day of the season, with probably a team you'd suspect would be up in the playoffs. It's time running out for Barry Bannon. Things will turn around, I'm sure. He didn't. He was okay today. He didn't have the best of games, actually, think about it. He really turned things around, how? Um, it's always about hard work, absolutely. We won't give up. We will keep going. And scoring four goals away from home. Well, that is certainly not to be sniffed at. Kasama has gone out on loan it's again. So it's just all the players we wanted to get out on loan have gone out on loan. Two of the players we put up for sale have gone. But no offers, no, nothing at all for Valentin or Sakira. So we'll have to wait and see how things pan out. But what a start. And uh, yeah, things hopefully are on the up for Sheffield Wednesday. If we have a look at the calendar then. As we start the league in July. And well, this is what is to come in the next f episode. So, then we'll do four games next episode. We'll play the league games. We'll play Cardiff at home, Middlesbrough away, QPR at home. And we'll sim the cup game against Mansfield. So, yeah, I think that's a good place to uh, certainly stop this one. And, uh, yeah, for the next one. So, guys, if you have enjoyed this first episode... Please pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you are indeed looking forward to what is to come in this series. And, uh, well, I'll see you in the next one.